Hello, everybody. My name is Toby, and I am the owner of Toby Wayne Studios. And today I'm going to be going over Sculpting Tools 101. Uh, a lot of these items here uh, can be purchased in stores, some of them can be ordered through Amazon. Um, I'll throw up a little description of where you can get uh, some of these items. Um, but to kick things off, we're going to start talking about the clay that we're going to be needing. Um, I use Chavant Medium Clay. Um, you can get this through Amazon. This clay is quickly becoming my favorite to work with. Uh, it's incredibly durable. Um, it holds details amazingly. Uh, or amazing, I should say. Um, it's just a very durable clay. It's, uh, I used to use Super Sculpey, but I got rid of that. I found that that was too mushy. There is three different types of clay for Chavant um, firmness. There's um, soft, medium, and firm. I enjoy the medium. Um, the soft is exactly what it says it is. It is way too soft. Um, I don't enjoy it. It gets too mushy. And the firm is ultra uh, firm. So I always stick with medium. It's a good uh, clay to work with. Uh, here you see some sculpting tools, uh, different various types. I've got uh, a lot of these purchased from um, just arts and crafts stores. Some of the tools I purchased from um, pottery stores. Uh, this one here is a, uh, a needle uh, that I, it's one of my favorites. I enjoy that one. Uh, different rakes. Uh, this one also is a, one of my favorites. It's a dental tool. It's got a sharp end uh, on this end. And then, of course, on this end is a spatula for spreading and pushing the clay around. Um, I enjoy that one. Those are two of my favorite tools that I use. One of the things I'd like to discuss also is um, sculpting tools in general. Understand that as an artist, if you can use anything to get the job done. Okay, so you don't have to necessarily use these tools in particular to achieve a, a desired effect. I mean, it helps and, and that's great, but you also can, you if you feel like you can use a popsicle stick to make your work shine, then great. Uh, you don't have to use these tools in particular. You can use whatever you want to use. Um, so uh, be feel free to be creative and just... Uh, sculpt you know use whatever you have to use to get the job done here is a base that i had uh, molded up and cast in resin and all i did was uh, just insert a armature wire that i just uh, glued in um, which this is great because i can slide my clay down on top of the wire uh, and I can handle the base and not the clay so that way I can just sculpt and I don't have to worry about touching the the sculpt with my bare hands so that always comes in handy if you can just find a base uh, which brings us to armature wire uh, this stuff is fantastic uh, if you can get your hands on some of this armature wire that's great you can find these at uh, pottery stores uh, arts and craft stores may also carry it, um, but this stuff is great. Um, I, you can use a, any kind of wire, technically, um, but armature wire is designed uh, to be a little more flexible and uh, pliable. Um, and so, yeah, go for armature wire if you can. This is floral wire, of course. Uh, this is for smaller parts such as fingers uh, and people have also taken the floral wire and wrapped it around the armature wire so that the clay actually has something to grab a hold of. Um, I don't necessarily do that. It's just what I've seen so uh, if it works for you, great. If not, then don't worry about it. This is a clay gun. Uh, these uh, come in pretty handy, um, especially if you're doing machined um, uh, parts on a sculpt. Um, these come with like a little disc and different discs and basically you just unscrew the top uh, and uh, slide your clay down inside the tube. 
Yeah, here I'm going to pop the top off here. Anyway, you just slide the clay down inside of there, choose the disc that you want, s screw the top back on, and then of course it just twists out and it squirts the clay out in the desired shape that you're looking for. Uh, comes in handy. I don't necessarily use it. Let's uh, talk a little bit about texture. Uh, these are texture stamps. Um, and also, you could these come in a whole plethora of different styles. You can order these through uh, different uh, mask-making websites. I'll carry them. Um, I am a big fan of just incorporating natural things, rocks, tree bark, lemon peel. Uh, I mean, you name it, I've used it. Uh, you can achieve tons and tons of different textures. Just all you have to do is look around. Look around and see what you have in your possession that will make unique textures in the clay. Uh, this is where you can get really, really creative. Uh, but the rocks are amazing. I, I use rocks on just about every single sculpt that I do. Uh, they just make great textures. Um, and it's they're really handy. And they're free because they're just laying around. Here you see t-shirts and uh, rag uh, Texture. This is great for when, if you're doing a sculpture with, say, a something with a shirt, you can soften the clip and press that in. Here is basic uh, cellophane. Um, I use this uh, for texture as well. Uh, you can actually soften up your clay a little bit and then just crumple it up and press it into the clay, and it makes this really interesting um, leather texture to it, um, which is great. Also, this comes in handy uh, if you take your sculpting tool and lay this up against your sculpture. You can actually run your uh, the tip of your carver there into the clay, and it will press in, but it won't dig into the sculpture. Uh, a lot of the times, if you drag it across the clay uh, or the sculpt without the cellophane paper bag or plastic bag it will leave these little residue pieces uh, that you have to kind of swipe off so this doesn't uh, cause that which is awesome you just uh, cover that with the sculpt also here is a uh, bag uh, just like a Safeway bag or whatever this is great too because this is pretty durable stuff a little more durable than the cellophane um, but the disadvantage is you can't see what you're laying it on on your sculpture so just be careful with that. Uh, here's some sponges, which are great. I always enjoy uh, working with the sponges. This is a coral sponge. I got this at a painting store and, of course, makeup sponges. And uh, these are great. Uh, when you lay in your uh, lighter fluid, you can uh, saturate it and then press it up against your sculpture, and it'll soften up the uh, the sculpture and the clay, and it makes this really great texture uh, and and almost looks like pores, uh, skin pores. So the finer, of course, the makeup sponge, the, the tighter the pores and the, the texture is going to be. Um, I really enjoy the, the yellow sponge here. Uh, it can be uh, pretty aggressive if you lay too much lighter fluid in there. So just be careful when you're using that. Let's talk about lighter fluid. This is an important part. Um, and also uh, rubbing alcohol. I very rarely use rubbing alcohol. I always uh, head for the lighter fluid. Um, it's much more aggressive. Um, please be careful when you're using this, um, especially when it comes to uh, handling it. Um, but lighter fluid is great. It will just uh, really work over your sculpture and soften and smooth and it'll give you an opportunity to really blend. The rubbing alcohol isn't quite as aggressive, um, so maybe if you're beginning, uh, try the rubbing alcohol. Uh, just don't drink it, please. Um, not very good. Uh, let's see. Oh, okay, brushes. Yes, brushes are great. Um, brushes are very important when it comes to getting into the fine little details and the nooks and crannies of the sculpture. Um, of course, I have uh, thicker fingers, so I'm always, you know, using my <laughs> brushes. Um, I don't like this brush. These brushes have kind of the fake hair. Uh, they're stiff. Uh, they gouge your sculpture, so be gone with you. Um, but I do enjoy these uh, more natural brushes. Uh, they're definitely the way to go. Uh, let's see what else do I got here. Oh, yes, a heat gun. Um, heat guns um, come in incredibly handy. Um, the Chavant Clay Medium 
um, is is a firm clay and on a cold day this really warms up your clay to make it more pliable you can use a blow dryer um, whatever you have on hand I just happen to have this this is more aggressive than a blow dryer of course and of course there are torches that you can use as well I don't really use torches but heat guns are great uh, they really soften the clay up um, blow dryers are the best way to go especially if you're beginning sculpting um, that way you have a little more control over it but this will definitely do the job and please be very careful when you're handling these things I promise you you will not enjoy the blisters that these things will give you uh, here you see a armature uh, that comes in incredibly handy these uh, you can purchase through mask making um, websites uh, they have the proper head proportions and neck proportions uh, and of course as you can see this one already has clay on it but it gives you the idea and it saves you lots of time and energy and uh, they're just coming incredibly handy so if you can score yourself one of these uh, this will help you out uh, tremendously you don't necessarily have to have one but again they come in incredibly handy I want to say they're like 50 or 60 bucks uh, this is a uh, turntable also known as a lazy Susan uh, I picked this one up I think for about uh, 99 bucks 100 bucks but it is well worth the investment you just put your sculpt on here and rotate it and uh, it's just a great tool to have so if you can add this to your arsenal of weapons uh, in sculpting that's great so this is going to wrap up our first video. I appreciate you guys checking this out. Uh, if you like what you've seen, please like and subscribe. Uh, and I will be bringing you new videos here very soon.